Hi, Lee Phillips here. I want to talk about EIN numbers, employer identification numbers, and basically the unused ones. What happens is, and I've seen this a lot, people get talked into setting up their corporation or their LLC in, in Wyoming or Nevada or Utah or New Mexico or Delaware or wherever it is. And these guys that set them up for you, they charge you a chunk. Then they charge you every year for the registered agent fee. That's all fine. I'm not going to argue about that at the moment. They're really dutiful though. They get you an EIN number. The problem is 90% of the people who do these LLCs and corporation in the glamour states never do anything with them. And yet there's an EIN number. So how does the IRS look at that? Is, I mean, do we need to get rid of the EIN number? What do we need to do? Well, if you've filed additional papers and you wanted it taxed under a corporation structure, I'm going to call it, under subchapter S or under chapter C, now that could either be a corporate legal structure or an LLC legal structure, <coughs> taxed under subchapter S or C. Then you've got a problem because those two entities, S or C, have a filing requirement. And the IRS has got a pretty steep penalty. It's $195 and it changes all the time, so don't quote me. But it's basically $195 right now per month, per member, per owner, stockholder of the LLC or the corporation for every month that the filing is late. So that adds up. And I've had people come to me with an $80,000 bill from the IRS because they've had an EIN number that they've never filed on. Now, if the EIN number is associated with a partnership, or I'm going to say a sole proprietorship, a uh, single member LLC, then we don't need to worry about it. Now, you can't have a partnership corporation, but you can't have a LLC taxed as a partnership or an LLC taxed as a sole proprietor. We call it a disregarded entity. And you could have EIN numbers in those two situations. <coughs> and that's okay if you haven't filed. There's no filing requirement for the 1065, the partnership, or for the disregarded entity, the sole proprietorship. So on the sole proprietorship, you, if you had income, you might have been filing a Schedule C or a Schedule E with your Social Security number, even though you had an EIN number for this entity. Your accountant just said, nah, you don't need an EIN number. We're going to use your Social Security number. Yeah, that's okay. So if I've got a Chapter C or Chapter S, and that requires additional filing, the 55, 2553 or whatever it is for the subchapter S, and then the, the uh, C, you have to file separate for them. If you've done those additional filings, you could be in trouble. We need to address it. If you haven't done those filings, then I don't really worry about your EIN number that you haven't been using. Well, could it be an audit magnet? Uh, not too much. The IRS really isn't going through and checking all unused EINs. They check the tax returns that are filed. So it's not too big of a deal, particularly if, if you've got the partnership taxation structure or the sole proprietorship <coughs> taxation structure. Should you get rid of the EIN? Probably not in those two situations anyway, partnership or sole proprietorship, because if you ever do pay an employee, then you could use that EIN number. If you don't have the EIN number, then you're going to have to put your social security number on this guy's W-2s and all of that crap. And you don't want your social security number floating around out there any more than you have to. So keep the EIN, address it if there's a problem with the subchapter S or the chapter C, and we probably ought to figure out how to kill it. So 
that's basically what you do with an unused EIN. Uh, don't sweat it, but let's address it under the S or the C. Let's basically forget about it if you're a partnership or a sole proprietorship under your LLC. Lee Phillips talking about what to do with an unused EIN number. And by the way, don't forget to subscribe and love us and, and, and all of that stuff. And if you do get in trouble, uh, I have a really good ebook out, 10 Mistakes People Make in an IRS Audit. Pick that up. You can get it for free. We'll give you the link here just down below or wherever they put it. And, uh, and, and you can get that, and that helps substantially. In fact, even if you're worried about just being audited, that helps because you know what they're looking for. So don't forget to subscribe and, 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 uh, and pick us up on the next round.